حلو 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 Yes, hello. Okay, Chairman, let me. You sent me a request. Hello, peeps. Oh, wow, got 12 people already. Can you see my. Chama, I have sent you. Have you joined? Yes, yes. Good well, evening. Oh, wow. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. Evening, okay. all. Thank, thank you. <laughs> I know, I know that you, you, you said that I should, I should call you Auntie Ron Careful. Yes, Pastor, Pastor Ron no, no, is no, is no, my, no, no, my no, preferred. No. You know, you know. You know, funny enough, what we were talking a few minutes ago because we we prayed before we got on. Hello, Bambisi. How are you, darling? It's been a while. Sorry. Hello, Yoni. Good evening, Auntie. Hello, Ife. You need to say hello. Sorry, if you see your hello, people, hello. Don't say hello. <laughs> hello, everybody. <laughs> hello, everybody. Well, thank you for joining us. No worry. Let's 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 just live. Let's let, let's go with the flow tonight. We're not going to fix ourselves. So, warm welcome, everyone. Nice to see our lovely, 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 lovely flow followers, friends, family. Thank you. I appreciate all the ways. Nice to see all of you again. We just love to my smile okay we're gonna we're gonna kick off today and you know it's hmm, a serious business today isn't it <laughs> okay <laughs> we're ready serious, serious business today and like what we normally do when we're here so we go with the flow of the holy spirit you know so um if maybe while Chama is talking, I feel the leading to just stop and we declare, we pray, you know, we'll go with that flow. We go with the flow of whatever it is that the Holy Spirit wants to do. Um, because, you know, through these interviews, lives are touched, uh, you know, lives are transformed, people have encounters. And I was saying to Chama before we started that, you know, someone reached out to me, was it last week about an interview we did last year that they went to watch and they were going on about how it had impacted them. So we know that people come back and people watch and people are, you know, are touched by what we share. So we're going to kick off now. So Chama, um, I'm going to ask you to start with, um, where you're from and then also what you do now i, I want everybody to just pay attention as we find out what it is that chioma does because i just believe that was the divine um intervention that made me ask her that question so chioma tell us where you're from so we get to know a bit about you um married or if you're single and what you also do thank you okay. <laughs> first of all thank you for the honor of having me on um, thank you for asking me. I really appreciate it and I don't take it for granted. Um, my name is Choma Alade. Um, for anyone that's Nigerian, you will know that that's an interesting dichotomy. Look at my husband in the comments saying that she's married. Look at my husband. <laughs> I don't blame My husband, I don't blame that, my husband that doesn't even use social media at all. Look at my husband. Yes, you know, we prayed for people to come. So, Isaac Alade, nice to meet you. And thank you for letting everybody know that she's married. And I understand <laughs> you have to claim because she's very pretty. So, I, I feel you. Yes, I <laughs> am you. married. I'm married to the love of my life, my bestie, Aww. my best friend. Um, but yes, I'm Nigerian. I'm able. Um, that's my culture. But I'm married now. So, in our culture, even in both cultures and in mine, we actually. Um, you become a part of the, the culture that you marry into. Mm. So technically, I'm now Yoruba. That's how the Igbos um, take it when you get married. Mm. Um, so technically, from an Igbo point of view, I'm now Yoruba. Oh, yeah. okay. So it's, a, so, so, so it's like, a, oh, so they truly, um, you know what the Bible says, that a man will leave his, um, a, a man will leave his family and cleave to his wife. Yeah. So it's a proper cleaving. Yes, like, yes. You know, like you truly become ah, and i and i i like that yeah. actually i like that okay okay i can see your husband <laughs> <laughs> okay yes he only says yes 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 and you have cleaved haven't you yes in in the real sense of the word yes you have cleaved together yes. haven't you? 
Mm. I think that's I think that's very important. Mm. And you know, that was a, a scripture that kind of the Lord had given me when we got married in terms of leaving and, and cleaving. Actually, mm-hmm. it's interesting wow. that you mentioned that. But I it's think really that's really true. important. I've told you we just be directing us. Just the, <laughs> just the Holy Spirit. Just the Holy Spirit. <laughs> um, you asked me what I do for a living. Yes. Um, yes, so, so just to point out, sorry, before you go on, you know, um, Coach Heidi said, yes, we do that too in my place. So Heidi is from you. And, and that's really important. Mm-hmm. And, and that's why I didn't want us to just glaze through it. There's a need for cleaving, you know. And I believe that when there's no cleaving, that is when you see a lot of separation and divorce, you know, happening. Because people are still living as individuals. So you go into marriage and everybody still has their own agenda, living as individuals. They haven't totally, you know, left everybody to cleave together as one preach it, preach i think it, that's actually if i'm being honest from a cultural point of view especially thinking as a nigerian mm. collectively that's one of the biggest reasons for divorce that i've seen an inability for people to understand that you're now married mm. as in your parents are not your yeah are not your are not your mm. husband your mm. siblings are not your wife mm. they're not your husband mm. and actually you start a whole new family and while we are to honor our, our parents. Mm. There is an absolute need for us to understand that God holds us accountable for our immediate family. Then he holds us accountable for everything else. Mm. So mm. not acknowledging mm. that, I feel like it causes a lot of problems. <laughs> it, it, it does. It, it does. And I don't know why we're sharing that because our topic today is not about marriage. But again, I want to believe that there's someone that needed to hear that. Um, and that's why we, we touched on that. You know, I pray that God help us to, to leave and to cleave, mm-hmm. you know, when we get married. It's, it's very important. Okay, so let's move on to the topic for today. Um, so, yes, tell us what you do, Chema. And, and I have a reason for that question. Oh, by trade, I'm a diamond specialist slash high jewelry specialist, mm-hmm. which is quite... Don't go, don't go and mock Chema when she finishes it. Because we people you've heard the diamond now, diamond specialist. Okay, go on. Sorry, don't mock me because everything that I sell is, is is in a special location. It's not at home. So if you come to, if you come to rob me, you don't, won't find you won't find anything in this I house. Diamond at home. <laughs> you won't find anything in this house. My things, and that's you know that you, know, you won't find. So mm. you just won't find. Mm. Um, but I really love my I really love my job. Mm. Actually, it's interesting because. I was going through some old sketchbooks from when I was younger and I found in, I think it was my GCSE or A-level assignments, I found a picture Mm -hmm. of a a diamond ring from the brand that I ended up working for for 11 years. Really? Yes. (laughs) Wow. And that's just to say the importance. And I remember when I had, had cut it out of Vogue and I remember thinking, oh, it would be such a dream to work there one day <laughs> and oh, i actually yeah. ended up so you know the part, I've, I've come yeah. to learn god hears I'm every every prayer every uh, we're not gonna talk about names, but but she used to work for a very top top i can say, um, say where i used to work i yes. used to work for company and co because yeah. you can google it so yeah. exactly <laughs> yeah so you were visit and you you caught us a piece of diamond ring when you were in gcs yeah hey yeah. so it's in my I, um, it's in my like my sketchbook. I, I, I could literally couldn't believe it. it was part of one of my assignments, either for GCSEs or A levels. Wow. And uh, I was putting things together, and that specific ring I sourced wow. quite a few for clients. So it was wow. just amazing to to find that. You know what? Please, everybody, type that. Thank you, I. The power of desire. You know, mm. we manifest what we desire. I'm telling you, we attract what we want. Yeah. We attract what we want. That is so powerful. Thank you for sharing that. And one of the reasons why I even asked her to share it was because it's such a field that you do not find people. You know walking in mm-hmm. you know and it's such a unique field and i'm going to let you my share some of my experiences walking in you know such a place like that because the kind of clients you meet how you relate to them and some of our experiences she shared she shared one i was like no 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 that couldn't have happened okay <laughs> the power of our desire yes yes so yeah tell me if you share with us you know um first of all i should say i i really um i see it as a massive privilege mm. i think the one thing i will say to to especially for black women and black men is that we we definitely have to understand our worth 
I think for a oh. long time I was so understand was so, your words people type that understand yeah I was so grateful, grateful yeah. to be in that environment I think it took me a while to realize you no know, I've, I've, I've earned the right to be here wow. you know I, I know my stuff and I've earned I've earned the right to be there mm. and I think we also underestimate the power of God to propel us to places where we can actually be an influence mm. and being there I met people that I would never normally met I mean I grew up in Deptford South London mm, like mm-hmm. I grew up seeing like people fight I grew up mm. the police were asked do you know where the name because we had two doors down there was a guy that used to do mm. you know illegal mm-hmm. things have mm-hmm. you seen everybody all of us go, no, 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 you you look wow. he will run he will run we don't mm. see me I will, we'll just mm. just run inside our house like mm. I think about how I grew up and I wow. think about the, the job I did and the job that I still do now, I own my own business, have a fine jewelry. And it's, it's a miracle. And wow. God can place us wherever he wants for his glory, if Come we're on. willing to use it for his glory. I think sometimes mm. we want to be in places because they look good mm. on social media. And actually, before, until I left, nobody actually on social media even knew where I where I worked oh. because it wasn't necessary it wasn't mm. necessary um mm. and I believe it, so. yes but, and also you know you have to be street smart yeah. you know I, I grew up in South London yeah. so um I understand the importance of being street smart of mm. being of being aware of your surroundings of yes. um of being safe mm. so it, it wasn't mm. necessary and it was when people would find out what I did it was it would be a shock Mm, mm. and some of your clients where are some of the things you experienced obviously it has nothing to do with the company we're not it's, it's, it's individuals isn't yes, it? yes yes isn't it? and and you know something you just said now that i thought is very important to us that we don't have to be statistics and we don't have to be victims of our environment you know um so um is that your is that your business in avila find you yes yeah, yes your people are, oh, yeah, hello. Are that's actually country. my pastor <laughs> oh hello pastor. god bless you thank you for being here oh, i love that see you see your people are you know they're, they're, they're gathering them. around you um <laughs> you know something you just shared that just crossed my mind before we move on is the fact that we don't necessarily have to be a product of our environment or should i say when god steps in you do not become a product of your environment absolutely because you know based on you know what you said about where you grew up how you grew up you know the the area in which you grew up normally if we go by the statistics that the world uses you know you won't be in somewhere like this yeah. you know yeah, yeah. even my like families and forget about all of that just my socioeconomic mm. background like mm. most people that work in fine jewelry first of all are third maybe even fourth generation jewelers wow. so there's a legacy mm. in that way mm. or they are, are being very honest caucasian mm. and, <laughs> or from very rich families because mm. there is a code right you know in 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 atmospheres of luxury in atmospheres where the elite are mm. there's a code mm. you have to yes um that you have to abide by that a lot of people don't really understand mm. and i think sometimes as christians we don't understand that when the bible says that we should be like like salt of, of the earth or yeast like if you see salt or yeast it's very very small mm. you know we're not expecting to change um, to change the, like ev- the whole system for us to join in we join in very tiny people don't even realize that we're there and then we add seasoning uh-huh. or we make it better we make the uh-huh. bread grow and i think that there is definitely a misunderstanding of the importance of us learning the system mm. so that we change the system okay. for god's glory wow. and a lot of my journey as a kid i was very different like i liked things that other kids didn't like mm. like i would walk mm. down to greenwich and go to village like vintage bookstores and mm. do cheese tasting mm. and all kinds of weird like i there were so many things i was a part of a classical choir for like three years oh, you know wow. yeah. there were so many things that i was that i did as a kid that people used to they didn't understand it about mm. me they're like a black woman doesn't like this kind of thing she <laughs> shouldn't like these kind of things you know but i didn't realize at the time that god was setting me up preparing he was preparing you. Wow me for yeah. a world where I would be where there would be nobody that looks anything like me yeah. but clients would find out quite quickly that 
we have something in common because mm. you know? when you can talk about what was it you said you went to go to fight classical yeah. whatever fine wine and so, dining yeah. and it's true yeah. i don't think about person what's wrong with fine wine and dining and all that you know just lit, just little things but yeah no i was part of a classical choir for three years we used to sing in english and latin oh wow um so which was really really like incredible um mm. and actually the only reason that um i had left was because at that they realized after three years i actually couldn't read music because a lot of black people the gift that god gives us is that we can pick by ear yes and i think that's actually kind of how i learned to harmonize mm. i couldn't read the music mm. but i i could i i learned i just picked by ear and then after three it took them three years mm. to realize <laughs> He said, "When you can eat like black, black don't crack. We will, we will, we will fit in somehow, somehow. When we need to, we will get along." He said, "Yeah." After they, after they realize that, they're like, but <laughs> but it's fine because I got what I needed to from the yeah. season. And to be fair, I needed to focus on my GCSEs season that point. So. <laughs> Oh, well, well, well done. Mm -hmm. And I remember you saying to me that, you know, some of your clients, when, you know, they start to engage with you and they say, oh, you're intelligent. So, so kind of like they weren't expecting it. And then you shared about one who you gave a jury and asked you to clean it or something. Yes. Well, no, they didn't want me to touch it. So the, the challenge you have working in that kind of environment is they don't expect there to be someone that's black. Mm -hmm. You know, they see it as why am I spending all this money mm -hmm. to be treated by a to be spoke like I right. have a have to deal with a black person right. like it's an insult to them so I have a lot of racism I mean I'll never forget the day that I was serving a gentleman and I remember he unbuttoned his shirt so that I could see the swastika mm. that was like um that was like literally tattooed mm. on his arm all kinds of like, like I think if I was to t talk about just racism alone like <laughs> we would be talking about it for wow. years like people that don't want me to touch things you know it's one of the most crazy experiences i can describe is talking to someone for like an hour and you mm -hmm. feel like yeah like they're a normal mm -hmm. you feel like yeah it's a normal and then all of a sudden they'll say okay no offense to you but can you bring a new piece that you haven't touched and then they will tell you okay i need to unwrap it so that you don't touch it oh my I said, but, but <laughs> meanwhile company policy is they can't touch packaging so what, what, what do we do then I know. Listen. So just okay. Use your glove and place it on the glass. Oh wow! Don't worry. Don't touch it. No offense. Just the or, or sometimes you'll get the no offense, but it's just the person that I'm giving. It. I'm fine mm. with you, but the person mm. that I'm giving it to you wouldn't want it if you had touched it. Wow. You know. Uh, and please, can we have reactions? Uh, and honestly, I really wanted us to. I, I, I said to. <laughs> I said to Jim, I said, um, if you don't mind sharing, and the reason why I wanted us to to bring this is so that we can you know some of the things we have to go through and you stayed you stuck it out because you knew where you were going yes. you know yeah. uh, and you know you could have reacted especially and because you, you grew up you you went up the ladder in your career isn't mm. it and, and you know you could have left earlier on but you know it's, it's good for us to be focused it's good for us to be patient it's, it's good for us to know what it is that god has called mm. us to to, mm. to do in, in even in in the face of you know some some serious challenges and you know well done well well done for 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 doing that and see now you you have your own business and you have your own client base okay so we can move on to the real story for today <laughs> i know i see all the reactions you know i know i know god you know don't worry we're, we're still we're still we're, we're still on you know because we're called by god to do exploits mm -hmm. irrespective of our race you know or our color or our creed so chairman we want to go down the story of your upbringing mm. and abuse which is the main story that we kind of like want to focus on today and um where would you say you know you started your journey of you know finding yourself in an abusive situation i think if you had asked me a couple of years ago mm -hmm. i would have said that things got progressively worse. But I think the more that I think about it, I was, and the more I know now about what abuse looks like, I was mm. born into a family that was very abu like abusive. Mm. You know, well, growing up, there was a lot of domestic violence. There was a lot of um, just a very dysfunctional family mm. unit. I think that really 
affected my development. And then when I was eight or nine, I was like eight slash well, eight going on nine. I was sexually abused for the first time, you know, by someone that I was related to. And that really, really affected my confidence. And, you know, I was thinking about the best way to describe it. And the Lord was just really honest with me, like this, like as he always is, you know, the God, no Lord always like, you know, <laughs> when you when you time to talk, when you want to, when you want to turn to things, and the Lord is like, are you doing it because you want to be perceived as physical? Are you, are you, mm. are you, are you just wanted to be honest? Mm. And I felt mm. the Lord just asked me today to just be very, very, very honest. And what happened was being the kid that I was, and I was a kid that loved the church. I still love the church. <clears throat> I have a passion for the church, yeah. um, and to see it as God desired for it to mm. be. Mm. and I was a kid that trusted everybody in church mm. and so I what, didn't it understand be. which is the way it, it should, should be, be. it should be like that yes and at the time I took the I didn't understand that it was abuse mm. but I knew but I didn't like the way that that person treated me anyway like mm. I knew that they weren't kind to me and they were very violent with me so I knew that it wasn't nice I didn't understand that that bit was abuse and I think if I could say anything to parents, I would say, educate your children on their body parts and all that kind of thing as early as possible because I would have recognized that it, I would have known that it was sexual if I had known but that about those kind of things, but I didn't have any idea. I was yes. very clueless yes. at that very time. Very important. Educate your children as early yeah. as you can. As early as you can, yeah. as early as you can. And so I took that, in, I, what was happening to me and I explained it to someone that was a Sunday, my Sunday school teacher at the time mm. and I because I thought oh this person will maybe be able to help me understand it mm. and then later on that person just ended up sexually abusing me wow. far worse for years mm. for absolutely years and I would say that between those experiences it really affected my psyche how I saw myself mm. um, and it took quite a, a while mm. for me with God to kind of figure it out. I think what took the longest time for me to figure out was actually that that was abuse. Mm. I didn't understand that any of it was abuse. And I think because it happened so young and with someone that I should have been safe around, I kind of just thought it was normal. Mm. I knew I felt uncomfortable, but I didn't realize that it was abnormal. Wow. That's a big one. Because if it's someone that you're supposed to be safe around, mm. you know, and like you said, you just saw it as normal. And that's the big one, you know. So you talked about, um, you know, the family being dysfunctional and, you know, all the abuse from, you know, what, how, uh, can you be a bit more specific in terms of, you know, the impact on things like your education, your mindset, even before you even go to the one that, because like I always say, abuse is like a spirit. Once it's been introduced once, yes. it just keeps coming. Hardly will you see one person that has been abused and it's just been a one-off, very rare. No, no, no. So like in total, I like, ended up being set from a sexual point of view by three different people. Okay. And I think that people don't understand the importance. You know, there's that Bible scripture that says that if the foundation mm. be destroyed, what can mm. they do? Because when you try to build on a faulty foundation, mm. you're always it's like sinking sand. Wow. Like you're never gonna have a stable structure. Mm. And mm. the way that scripture tells us to deal with things is to root to root up. You have to root yeah. up weeds before wow. you can build something solid. And I think because the foundations of what I saw as a child was a family home that had so much violence, mm -hmm. so much emotional abuse. I experienced, there was, there was neglect, there's was, there was so many different things going on. And I definitely had a mother who was trying her best. But when you have an abusive man in a the house, there's really only so much you can do. You can try mm -hmm. the whole world and she really, really did try. But yeah. when there's abuse in a home, it affects the kids. Mm -hmm. It affects the kids. And when we talk about things like domestic violence and all those kind of things we don't necessarily understand that there's a massive impact on children mm. i think we spend a lot of our time and actually this is domestic violence awareness month right yeah. so we spend a lot of our time talking about the actual woman and the man but yeah. what we actually skip out is the kids mm. and the kids aren't okay mm -hmm. 
like everyone think, oh, the kids, maybe they're not on some, no, the kids yeah. know everything that's going mm. on. Mm. And that's one of the reasons why we have to encourage women to get to safe places. My mom didn't get, didn't get the help that she deserved. Mm. And I think that if she had, our lives would have been very different. Mm. So from any mother watching, please do not. And you know what you said about children is so true. One of my guests that I also interviewed, he's and the interview is still on YouTube. That really got to me. And it was a guy. I know it's rare for, 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 for guys to talk. And he was sharing his experience about and the and the way he described it and his his dad was, was quite a well known pastor in the UK. And his mom and dad had issues and there was a divorce mm -hmm. and um what what he then said was when the elephant falls the grass suffers mm -hmm. and when he said there was a war you know mm -hmm. so what he was saying was although he was talking about um I was talking about divorce, mm -hmm. you know, and the impacts on him, on his family, especially because their parents were so well known, you know, and um but what he was then saying is everybody focuses on the man and the woman, especially when the divorce is going on and whatever. A lot of people focus about them. A lot of people forgot about, you know, what they were mm -hmm. going through, mm -hmm. especially being the first child and everything. So, you know, yes, there's a lot of information about, you know, abusive parents, abusive mother. It's true. What is happening to the children? What's going on with their mindset? What's going on? I remember you were talking about um, the, I think, some challenges you had with your education. Yes, yeah. You know, as a result result of yeah uh of of what happens you mm. know and coming on and seeing that every day you know not knowing what will happen and that's mm. why i said you know it would be nice for you to just you know give us the impact on your education on your mindsets you know i've heard of children not being able to sleep children going to school and you know shaking you and shivering having nightmares you know you don't i think i i and i think i speak for anyone that has lived in a house where there's abuse. You don't sleep. You don't. You don't get normal sleeping patterns. Wow. It took me years to learn. Like I remember when I when I first got married, and my husband would be like, "Like you don't, you don't." It's like what are you like, what are you? I remember at one point I was like, "What exactly are you waiting for?" Like it's like you're like, "What what are you? What what are, what are you?" Because I just, you know, years and years later, and it took me a long time to now like. You know that scripture where the Bible says that he gives his beloved sleep? Like, mm, yeah. the fact that I sleep through the night now is an, is an absolute miracle. Oh. And I think besides that, I think it's like the emotions, it's a turmoil. I think, mm. it, you know, stillness is a very important thing. And mm. when, you're con when your nervous system is on high alert, right, you don't, you're, not, you're not still. You don't, you, you, you can't bring up children that understand what it means to be still. Mm -hmm. all, you're always going to, they're always going to be on the go. They're never going to be able to, to, to think straight, you know, and it, it only takes the grace of God for someone to, and that is a biological thing, right? It's, yeah. a, it's a fight flight mentality. Right? Yes. Yeah, so I'm going to say flight to fight. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. yeah. It takes the grace of God to actually be able to reprogram wow. your ner nervous system. And yeah. And the hormones also, you know, the, the, is it cortisol, the, the hormones that, you know, that is um, adrenaline, sorry. So it's almost like an adrenaline, which is the hormones that you should use, mm. you know, to protect them, to react. You are constantly producing adrenaline. And it, I, you can understand at times why some people grow up and they're actually ill. They find themselves, you know, ill as a result yeah. of, because it manifests, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, on, on the physical in various ways, mm. you know. So, I mean, I have a multitude of chronic illnesses, but um the, the one of the major symptoms that i had as a kid was fainting and that's literally started after one of the times that i was abused and it, you know what people don't understand is that when it comes to chronic illness and, and, and a lot of disabilities um you'll be actually shocked to find out the amount of ones that are um that can be influenced by trauma mm. children that grew up in abusive homes report far higher yeah. cases of adhd mm. than children that don't grow up in, in abusive mm. homes there are some um kind of immune immune kind of uh, chronic illnesses like pot syndrome which i do have mm. and a couple of others that do that actually one of the medical um symptoms is tr a traumatic life event wow the on like a traumatic life event mm. brings it on mm. we're gonna pray for we're just gonna pause there for a few minutes and i just feel it and i just want us to 
Uh, and please everyone just join me you can add your prayers to the to, to the platform like i said i go by the flow of the holy spirit i just want us to pray for children as we're mm. speaking that are still going through one form of abuse or the other you know that the parents are trying especially the mom to stay there that lord you will open the eyes of the parents oh lord god and they will get help and once you just pray for those children and we use trauma trauma is not in that situation anymore but lord god we want to thank god for our life but want to use as the point of god and declare complete wholeness and healing for anyone that has been through any form of abuse sexual or witness their parents going through abuse lord we just send them love we send them peace and we declare your wholeness and your perfect healing upon them in the mighty name of jesus yes. thank you lord thank you Thank you. Thank you, Father. We speak peace. We speak peace. We speak peace. You know, as, as you were just sharing, you know, and it just occurred to me that even as we're speaking now, some children are probably called up somewhere, you know, because of what they're witnessing and what they're going through. Yeah. Mm. It's, it's crazy. I mean, and as a Christian, it bothers me greatly. You know, there was a statistic um, from a, some research done in the UK, not that long ago, that within the UK church, this is not the what, the, the church, mm. that one in five women have experienced domestic violence wow. at the hands of their husbands. This is in the UK church, mm. right? And that is very convicting to me mm. as someone that um, volunteers in the church. You know, as someone yeah. that leads in church, I think that is very sobering mm. and convicting. Mm. That our eyes really need to be open because okay, yeah. when it comes to like domestic violence, it's really not as uncommon as we think. Mm. One in five Christian women. That's a lot. That's a lot. And we're talking. We're going to talk about the flags, isn't it? The red flags to look out for. And mm. um, I mean, people can watch this, and people can come back and watch this and look at the red flags. And I know that you're saying this, especially because you mentioned the church, not in any way to pull down the church, but it's more to bring awareness. Because I know how passionate you are about the church. Because I actually was at an event, and that was where I met you, where we were talking about, you know. You know getting people back into church you know so we're not anti um yeah. church here or no 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 we're no, very pa into... pastor, so no. <laughs> exactly so because she's a pastor we're pastor so we're very into, and we believe in the faith we believe in the power of the church but we also want to bring awareness yes. into what is happening so that people will stop guessing us and those who are the perpetrators they can get help they yeah. need help is who can get also get help and that's really what we're we're about mm. so you talked about the first phase Gemma, of of what you went through and the abuse mm. and you also talked about the second phase when that introduced how did that happen you know because you shared with me um you used the word grooming and i wanted us to look yes. at you know grooming how you would not even know you know what's happening to you yes. so the way i would describe grooming is kind of manipulation for a reason like yeah. it's really true for, for a, a negative reason. It's, it's, it's a predator trying to make sure that they get their hands on their prey. Mm. And they are very, I think we really, when it comes to sexual abuse, we totally underestimate how smart predators are. Mm. Like we really underestimate it. They are very good at finding vulnerable people. Yeah. And when I say people, because we always think that sexual abuse is about just women, but mm -hmm. it's not, it's, it's men. There's a, a lot, it's yeah. one in six men wow. in the UK that are sexually abused, right? Um, so I think we really underestimate how specific they are. They go after children that they know have had traumatic life events. They go after kids that they know have absent fathers or mm -hmm. fathers that are not mm -hmm. healthy. They go after children um, who are struggling in school. They go after children who, um, you know, disabled children and women, children with chronic illnesses report a far higher um, chance of being sexually abused. In fact, in America, it's tw they're twice more likely than a healthy child to be sexually abused. Here it's about a third more, right? Mm. So they are very good at di diagnosing vulnerable kids. They go after vulnerable kids because vulnerable kids are less likely to actually speak up. Mm. 
they're less likely to speak up. Mm-hmm. And we often, someone just said that predators are usually closer than we mm-hmm. think. Absolutely, 90% yeah. of people are sexually abused by someone that was they already knew. Mm-hmm. And as a parent, it's, you know, it's important for me to remember that actually, um, that it will be, it's 90% is someone that, someone that you already know, mm-hmm. right? Someone that you already have a relationship with. Yeah. And to be fair, it, that also explains as a subsidiary why people don't speak up about sexual abuse for so yeah. long because from a from a child's point of view right it's someone that they know children only have relationships that their parents introduce them Introduce-ed. to whether they take them to that yeah. school or an uncle or a teacher yeah. or yeah. a friend or an auntie yeah. right so yeah. it's someone that's already in that person's life and they and when it comes to kids they will usually groom the parents first yeah. you can't just yeah. snap someone's kid and sexually abuse them there are some serial people that do that and, and kidnap children um but for the most part children are mm. abused by someone that um has already groomed their parents and made their parents feel like they're a trustworthy person a trustworthy. who then abuses mm. the child grooming grooming parents please thank that one down i didn't I, that's actually another angle to look into that and that makes a lot yeah. of sense yes. first of all gets into um the the children so in terms of um, the second person that, because I remember you said that there was a grooming process. Mm. I can't, there was a question asked, what were the things, you know, did he get your trust? How did you meet the person? You yeah. Know, just I mean, specifically your story. I think he was very good at understanding that I was vulnerable. Mm. And so he gave me what he knew I wasn't getting at home. Oh. Which was affirmation, right? So wow. he knew, he knew the he knew the family dynamic very well, mm. very well. So um, he, I would say that he was complimentary. He was he seemed like a knight in shining armor, mm. right? Mm. That's the I I would describe it as um, a nightmare that the victim doesn't realize is a nightmare. Mm. Like it's a horror story that the victim thinks is a fairy tale. Wow. You think, wow someone mm-hmm. actually cares mm-hmm. about me. someone yeah. sees me someone um someone sees my potential someone thinks i'm gonna be someone and you trust that person the person successfully already groomed everyone in your life and then something happens if you don't realize that that what's happened is abuse you blame yourself mm-hmm. that person mm-hmm. you, it's your fault you 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 do blame yourself mm-hmm. right and there's other things that make it even harder to diagnose in the mind of oh my light's gone off don't know why there you go um in the mind of um a victim that it is abusive or makes it harder for people to speak out things like faith it being in a faith-based environment Mm. things like culture yes massive one as an african nigerian i know the massive massive stigma Mm. that sexual abuse has yeah, and then if you do work out that sexual abuse then you're worried about speaking mm-hmm. out because then you, mm-hmm. you're, you're also worried that people will will or will not believe you and to be fair most victims are not believed yeah. so people we, we kind did of you, did you speak of because i know that yeah i have yeah, we have interviewed people and they said mm-hmm. no they won't believe I, I don't know what's going on this life um <laughs> <laughs> it took a long time for me to speak up mm. a very long time a really long time um I think because I didn't realize that it wasn't my fault from being really mm. honest. I didn't know it wasn't my fault. Mm. I think it took me a long time to understand that. I think, I think first I had to get over the fact that it wasn't normal and realize that. Then I had to realize that it wasn't my fault. Mm. That took even longer. And then the, because the abuse also went on for quite a long time. Isn't yeah, it? Years. Yeah, 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 years. Mm. Um, and I think when we ask, well, why doesn't someone speak up? We forget major things like grooming and control. Mm. Those, th- the grooming is to ensure that the victim doesn't speak up. The grooming, the control, all those things together, they're making sure that they know everybody in your life, right? They're mm-hmm. making sure that they know your parents and um, that other people trust them. It's all to ensure that when it happens, you won't speak up. Yeah. And predators also choose kids like very, very, very well. I mean, all all adults because adults get sexually abused too. Mm. I think we always think about it with kids, but sexual abuse can happen to anyone at any age. 
You know, mm -hmm. we're seeing, unfortunately, a lot of cases in the UK of elderly people being sexually abused in care homes and things like that. So it, it can happen anywhere. Mm -hmm. And I think this is where I, we have to have our wits about us. And if we feel like something is wrong, we should say something. And some of the red flags that I would say to look out for is someone changing overnight, someone cutting off their family and their mm -hmm. friends, someone's, like, I would say this is their behavior changing for sure. Mm -hmm. Feeling like they have to check in with that person about every little detail of their lives before mm. they do anything mm. like those are ev that's, that's evidence of control and I think when it all kind of came out when I spoke and, and I, I remember speaking to people everyone just said oh you know what that kind of made sense now, now, now I think about it yes. I think about it mm. and I think about it, it was <laughs> kind of, kind of, that, was, that was obvious we missed it mm. Um, mm. And I think, I think one of my life's goal is to make sure that less people miss it. Mm. Wow. That less people miss it. But also, I will say, one of the most stupid things you can do to a survival sexual abuse is being like, oh, I knew something was wrong and I didn't say anything. Very, very unhelpful. Mm. Like, oh, I mm. always knew something was wrong. Like, if you didn't say anything. Yeah. Thing, yeah. You, like, have you heard people say that yeah. to you before? Oh, like, I, really, oh, I thought, like, I really thought, I thought something was wrong with that guy. Mm. But. Okay, and then you did what? And then, okay, and then you say that now, that you know the guy's a predator. Okay. Help me understand the, to, okay, if you want, you want the, the trophy for, for proving that you had, that you have discernment, that you didn't use, like clap maybe for yourself. Like, maybe there was this for Will Bim for time. Like, what award do you want at that point? Like, what? Oh, I knew something was dodgy. Okay, you did that, you did what? <laughs> You know, it's time go that we can laugh. You know, we can laugh about it now. Um, you, the the predator, he wasn't just you, was it? it no, was you, no, no. I mean, and that's that's another that's thing another I really thing. want to say, and I want to say this because I've never, ever, ever met a victim of sexual abuse who thought that the person abusing them, if they worked out that they were being abused and didn't blame themselves, which is normally what happens after people get into therapy, right? Um, was thought that they were abusing other people. Because if everyone thought that, first of all, if you acknowledge it was abuse, then you realize they did something wrong, mm -hmm. then you would report it. Yeah. Then you would speak up, right? Mm -hmm. um, but blame keeps people silent. Mm -hmm. And then we assume, because we've been groomed, because we've been controlled, and our self-esteem has been valued so much, mm -hmm. we assume that what happened to us is our fault, mm -hmm. first of all. Then that stops us from even thinking that it could be happening to somebody else yeah and that's often why it's only when victims speak in numbers which is what happened in my case but it's only when they all speak at the same time do you ever see justice done how often do we ever hear the news that one person spoke and then someone went away no mm -hmm. it that was the strength of the me too movement that started a couple of years ago in hollywood right it, we have women have to speak or men have to speak all at the same time in order to be, be believed mm. and for it to actually go somewhere from a legal point of view. Mm. I think. Yeah. <laughs> and so, that goes somewhere for you. I mean, I, I know you might not be able to go into much detail, mm. but did you get so from your abuser or predator? Did you get where, you know, um, did you get to a stage where people started speaking up and then it's gone somewhere? It had, well, well, we'll find mm. out. I'll keep you up when 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 we have a conclusion, yeah. I'll I'll come back and well, tell people you. People <laughs> have speaking up. I, I think that's what I'm trying to get to. Not yes, yes. Yeah. People are just speaking. People up. are speaking up. Yeah, and most of the experiences were they the same in terms of what? Oh yeah, happened? that's 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 the crazy thing. It's mm. it's like when you speak to other people that have been sexually abused, and you're like, wow, like we all drank the same Kool Aid, like as in, ah. Like it's like they all go to the same place in hell to learn how to do this thing, <laughs> and they come back. <laughs> they come back <laughs> with the demons and just behave. It's the same demon. Like you know, I was talking to to victims, and I'm like, if, if I just change the name, if I just change the name, hmm. it could be the same person. Like it really could be the same oh person. God. Um, their their behavior is very similar, and I think God has. God in his mercy has actually mm. made it quite 
easy if we know mm. how to read the signs of mm. if we know the importance of safeguarding mm. uh to, to to actually detect it it's quite obvious it's very similar character traits like mm. their their lack of self-control it doesn't just go to sexual abuse they they, they are people who are, i i've never met someone or heard of a predator from a victim who didn't have a massive temper like that's a that's mm. another red flag but like a massive ego mm. like you know mm. they like to hold power over people so ego. it's natural that they have character- that's been noting all these things down you know i know that if people go online that work with children so i'm sure they would have worked on safeguarding but you know again the reason why i'm asking you to share all this is because we don't know the people that are going to come back and watch this video yeah and maybe this video would help one or two people or empower someone you know like someone said blame keeps people silent maybe mm. they would stop being silent and they would decide to talk mm. hoping that especially now that we've said that you know they usually don't have one victim it's more than one yeah. so that they can then no one know, ever is one person mm, there's mm. always more always more mm. And how did your journey to, you know, getting out of this and recovery, where and how did that start for you? I think not blaming myself mm. or understanding that I wasn't to blame mm. was the first thing mm. that started that healing journey. Yes. Realizing that it wasn't my fault. Yeah, it's crucial. And I think you also need people in your life that are also not you necessarily to say that to you. Mm-hmm. you know, I remember speaking to my husband about it and he immediately, like, immediately believed me. Mm-hmm. Like he immediately, like he, he immediately, there wasn't a shadow in his mind that, oh, maybe like, is it like, mm-hmm. he, he believed it 100%. Wow. And I think his his anger about it made me understand oh wait like this what happened was really bad you know and then when you hear that it's not your fault Mm. from somebody else's mouth it does something so healing to you and we see justice in the book of amos we see um we see jesus time and time again talk about Mm. coming you know isaiah 61 like the spirit of the lord is upon me to to break the captives Free, free. Yeah. you know the opening of the prison bound the prison mm-hmm. to those that are bound yeah. yes. freedom is echoed all throughout scripture it's the reason that jesus died right was for our freedom mm-hmm. from everything mm-hmm. and realizing that jesus cared about my freedom mm-hmm. and that it wasn't mm-hmm. my fault mm-hmm. were like the two things that changed my mm-hmm. life just can we type it so that anybody else that comes afterwards it's not your fault it's not your fault i can so attest to that you know because um a, a client that i had you know immediately we went down that line of it's not your fault you know it was like a, a damn broke loose yes my you know? yeah and you know there was just a reconciliation because you've been made to think all along yes. that you're the reason and you're at fault for getting this abuse that you got um I know you mentioned your husband and I thought it was very important. You know, I, I don't know if he's still on. I, I really, really want to, um, I, I don't, I want to use the word salute him, you know, <laughs> and, and I'll tell you, <laughs> and I'll tell you exactly. why, you know, you know, for men that, you know, men that actually hear stories about their wives. And you said something, you said, uh, you know, he, affirmed he, he, he assured you he, he believed you and mm-hmm. if that hadn't taken place you know and there was unbelief when you told him you know that could have broken everything completely oh yeah absolutely mm. if if he had i think if he had blamed me it would have it would have destroyed me like mm. that i would have the the trajectory of my life mm. i think would have been very very different Mm. I'm so grateful to him. And actually he had no idea about any of this when we got married because I hadn't, I hadn't, I hadn't processed it at all. Mm. And he was actually the first relationship I had. Like I didn't have, we just, we had a courtship, we got engaged, we got married. I never had boyfriends. I never had, I never had any kind of consensual, Mm. like Mm. sexual experience. I didn't even, Mm. I didn't, I didn't even have a boyfriend, you know? Mm. And that part, was that because of the abuse or you, you were just, yeah. I think for a very long time, I really hated men, to be mm-hmm. honest. I yeah, really hated yeah. men. Mm-hmm. But generally, I I was, I think in my mind, I definitely was able to separate um, 
to an extent like I just I knew that I didn't want any relationships outside of mm. marriage that was very important okay. to me yeah. like I didn't want any I didn't want any and I I wanted to be um I wanted the the first relationship I was to be with the person I was going to marry because I understand that, that these things can have a lot of baggage mm. I mean, had a lot of baggage already <laughs> but <laughs> uh he just was mm. just just a rock that's the only way I can describe it um, and I also know that I'm so I'm so fortunate because mm. a lot of women in that yeah. situation never say anything to their husbands because they feel like they were treated differently or it doesn't it breaks it completely breaks a marriage yes I was gonna talk about breaking the marriage yeah different people that have been engaged to be married yes people don't say that they've been sexually abused because they feel like or they know especially from a Nigerian point of view I know mm -hmm. how what my culture is like mm -hmm. like but like people see it as your sport goods, your tainted goods. Mm -hmm. One of the things that he did say was, I'm really glad I know because you now make a lot oh, of wow. sense. <laughs> he was yeah. like, Your behavior wow. makes sense. He was like, It all mm -hmm. makes this is like the missing jigsaw wow. piece. I feel like I finally wow. understand you. Like, it, wow. it makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yes, it was a rock. Thank you. And thank God for his, his life, you know. We're mm. just gonna send him prayers. So God bless you, sir, for for <laughs> you know for for standing. And it's very important for yes. standing, you know, by such a beautiful. And and I also believe that again, it's another tool that the devil will use to mm. break homes or break um um you know yeah you know break homes or even um, post Christian marriages. There was something you said I just wanted to pick on. Um, there's some chemicals that are released. Okay, agreed. I'm more Ghanaian. Sorry, I'm just reading some of the comments. I'm more Ghanaian than Nigerian, but yeah, you did the right thing, mm. sis. Okay. And so, I think I just want to say to that okay. comment about doing the right thing. Yeah, you have to understand. You have to get to the point where you actually understand that you've been abused mm. to actually, because mm. it's the not necessarily the right thing for him. To be honest, it's, it's about the right thing that's for me. Mm -hmm. You know, being in a safe environment and. For true, I have seen honestly for the majority of it, telling people that you've been sexually abused doesn't go well. Okay. Let me let me be, let me be let me be very mm -hmm. honest. My husband is is an absolute anomaly, so I don't want to give the impression that oh no, I you know people don't do it or don't say anything because legit it breaks marriages mm -hmm. and sexual abuse is not sexual experience. Mm -hmm. You don't come on. Sexual abuse is not sexual experience. It's not sexual experience. But... Experience. Like I don't know why we put it in the same category. Oh, someone that's like, no, sex and rape are two very different things. Mm. They have very two different. You, you know, you don't need to see multiple surgeons and multiple doctors and get swabs and all kinds of things when you have sex with someone. But you do when you get raped because the the and the imp the impression, the impact. It's I, I think about it like a car accident. Mm that no one mm. treats like a car accident. Mm. That is what sexual abuse is. Mm. Oh it affects every part of your it's body. True. It affects your brain, it affects your bones, it mm. affects your muscles, it affects your nervous system, it affects you neurologically, it affects how you, how you react, how you behave, it affects your gastrointestinal mm. system. Mm. Like children that are sexually abused, I usually experience gastrointestinal problems for life. Wow. Like it's a, a real serious thing, it's not, sexual abuse and sex are not the same are not the same thing mm. and we need to like completely differentiate between the two mm. it's an insult actually to survivors to even insinuate that they are the same mm. because they're not mm. and the way we treat survivors matters oh. is this something it, about that yeah it matters we don't we don't often believe them. I don't. I don't necessarily feel like our medical system, if I'm being really mm -hmm. honest, um, does everything that it could. I think what ends up happening is victims end up chasing specialty after specialty. Mm. We we have enough rapes in this country that we should have a, a specialized clinic that's that's that, that caters to it and follows you through every step of the way. When a crime happens to you in any other way of, if you get your car stolen. The police are going to call, you're going to do all these things. And we, while we do have a massive amount of resources now available, as in comparison to even 15 years ago, actually mm. a lot of them are charity funded, not yes. necessarily governmental, mm. government funded. 
and it takes time for abuse victims actually to be able to talk about what they go through mm. and most of the counseling and stuff that they will offer you from a judiciary point of view when you report something is is right then but most people can't they can't handle going through a case and doing therapy at the same you, mm. that it's it's too much it's mm. too much yeah it's, it brings up too much yeah it's too much mm. and then we have to talk about the fact that what we're talking about two percent less than two percent of, of of rapes and in a mm. conviction in the uk again which was why safeguard isn't important mm. because there are literally people mm. around that are not repentant and are abusing people and haven't seen a day in justice so let's talk about safeguarding because i know you've mentioned it a few times so so for those who don't know what safeguarding it really was this safeguarding and i know you've mentioned it and i just before we round up because of time i can't believe this is almost done now, um i want us to just touch on one or two things regarding your relationship even at end of plus the fact that what's happened to you so tell us a bit about safeguarding please the, the way i think about safeguarding as a survivor is creating an inhospitable environment for predators mm. so mm. making an environment oh wow I like the way you put it. yeah as inhospitable That's as incredible. uncomfortable for predators mm. like clear boundaries clear lines um uh oh you know uh, windows mm -hmm. no but you know when i think about the church that i grew up with and that whole situation like the the, the sunday school was in a completely different area and mm -hmm. there were there wasn't really any accountability at all on mm -hmm. relations with children outside of the church environment there was mm -hmm. no code there was no serious code of conduct there was no um there was not enough done to make sure that the kids in their care were really safe so it was mm. not surprising and if you if you if you say everything goes in environment then don't be surprised if predators mm. camp there because you basically just told them that no one checks here so i can do whatever i want and they pick that up yeah absolutely because mm. 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 yours was, was from church also I mean, yeah yeah and yeah. i think um even when it comes to schools I think one thing that we need to work on in the UK is there's a massive loophole in our legal system. Mm. So our charities and our charities are where, uh, unfortunately, a lot of abuse occurs, which is in our religious systems. A lot of our religious, our churches and mm. uh, mosques and all kinds of um, religions will usually fall, fall under the charity bracket, right? Mm. Um, and even things like independent schools where we see massive amounts of, of abuse happen. Mm. Um, they all fall under charities mm. and in our law system we are advised to um, report it is suggested to report but it's actually not against the law in the UK to not report sexual abuse if you hear about it within a charity and that loophole means that people find out about things but don't actually report it okay. legally at the moment I'm praying to change that <laughs> but mm. legally at the moment um, there's no there's 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 not any way to go after people who hear about things and don't report and that needs to change and that you said you're going to try and make sure that make sure that happens we're going to pray along with you uh, it's true because you know some of the like like i, like, like I said um, at an event i was was it last week or so that let your tears wet someone else's garden so what you've been through let it it's, you know it's propelled something in you that makes you want to do something yeah. about and i and i'm sure everybody can tell the way you are really us the figures i'm sure they can see that you've done your research you know are you really open to it and bless you for that um really bless you for that i thought also for, for you just to flag out um someone said what can we do to help you with this Um, you have my prayers and support queen yes we're going to be praying along we're going to be also you know and i i, I spoke to um Chema about something we're thinking of so watch out people we never know something might be coming up but yes but also just to bring up the fact i know you said in the uk you know if we really think back of it you know most countries even back home you know um if you were to think back home in nigeria you know so many people an average I, i'm sure it would probably be maybe maybe four out of five you know that you know growing up with uncles and you know all these uncles and aunties you know yes 
and all these uncles and aunties and what they get up to you know it is it is only god if we were to sit people down you know we'll the nigeria um, statistics are if they, anyone did it's it's crazy like i've been speaking to a lot more activists um and advocates in nigeria mm. and it's you know last week there was justice for a man that had literally caused a woman to commit suicide because of what he did to her she had been proposed to and he raped her the day after she was proposed mm -hmm. to from her boyfriend and she killed herself um and that was one of a massive list of literally hundreds of girls that this man had sexually abused crazy enough he actually started his abuse in the uk actually um I, I was sad to find not even too far from me um and you know when we talk about advocacy i want to give a massive shout out to people that are advocating for sexual abuse in nigeria mm. because the legal system is not on their side mm -hmm. but god is definitely doing something mm. landmark landmark mm. trial literally just happened um so people like tonya from um, bruise not broken and kate henshaw are doing like mm -hmm. incredible work in nigeria what if nigeria are doing an amazing work now they just love i believe um mm -hmm. and we bless god for everything that they're doing thank god yes totally agree mm -hmm. so just as we round up because it's nine o'clock um wow. I really truly just want to hear. Yeah, we're going to round up now. I just want to because just one step, uh, you know, back to your marriage, and you know, I, I want us to to just share a bit what the journey of your marriage has been. I know you've touched on it, and you know why I said so, because I want everybody to hear as we round up that you know God helps us to defy the norm because the norm would be like like you said that after you've been through what you've been through, you know. Um, there's a possibility that when you get into marriage, what you've experienced yeah. or what you've seen yes. with your parents, you know, there's a repetition pattern, you know what yeah. that is. Yes. Um, you know, we've talked about, you know, the spirits, you know, I was saying about, you know, when one spirit finds out that, you know, uh, is empty, they'll go back and call seven more spirits. But we thank God that has kept you mm. and that has kept your life. And, you know, you are in a marriage. What has been your experience in your marriage, irrespective of what you've been through? I think up upbringing really matters. Mm. And I mar married a man who saw his father love his mum. Mm. And, and I think that was a massive... He didn't know... He doesn't know anything other than that. Mm. He doesn't know any... He doesn't know... He doesn't have any other frame of reference. Mm. So I think that was a major thing. I also think the fear of God... Is a, is a massive thing mm -hmm. too. Like when God is your guide mm -hmm. and not culture mm -hmm. or people's mm -hmm. opinions, you know, you can kind of say to your wife, if you want to talk about sexual abuse online, I'll, I'll go for it. My husband does not, does not spend any time on social media, mm -hmm. but he's probably my biggest cheerleader. <laughs> yeah. um, and to be fair, I think, yeah, after God, definitely my greatest gift was my husband, mm -hmm. like oh. by far. No one has ever affirmed my confidence and actually my need to be independent you know mm -hmm. he always asked me this question which is is this a we decision or a you decision wow because he realized quite quickly that you know i'm i, I have a tendency to be quite codependent i think when he realized a little bit more about my history in terms of the sexual abuse he was that ah uh, that's why she behaves mm. the way she behaves mm. right um, understanding yeah that's that's so key for me yeah, yeah. And I think he's really helped me to actually, in a, it sounds crazy in terms of a, of a marriage, but actually he's, he's actually helped me to stand on my own, like two feet. Okay, mm. Chama, what do you want to do? Mm. Not, not me, not anybody. What do you want to do? What do you You know, also, do? I think he's helped me to repel dysfunction. Like, mm. okay, every time you talk to people, you're crying. That person, like, is this, is this a healthy relationship? Mm. Or is it mm -hmm. like you deserve to be treated with respect? Mm -hmm. And I think my husband has has taught me that actually, yeah, I deserve to be totally deserve to be treated mm -hmm. with respect. You mm -hmm. know, and wow. he was like, even even from me, you know, you deserve to be treated with respect. So you need to start behaving like it. And oftentimes he gets more upset mm -hmm. with me if he's on him because he's like, sometimes you just he gets frustrated with me because he feels like I don't always, um, I, I don't always, I, I tolerate, what I tolerate, it, the bar is, mm. is low. Mm. 
from design. Mm-hmm. I need to bring a bar. To raise. Yeah. To raise the bar. Need to raise the bar. And I've, oh, I've learned to. I've learned to. Second time, but I've learned to. Thank you for it. Oh my wow! Please let's just send love and appreciate to my husband. Please, I I just you know. Please, 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 I want emojis. I want comments. Please, God bless him. God honor him. God promote him. Mm. You know, God will and God will use him to teach other men. Wow, that Amen. just dropped in my spirit. Amen. You know, Amen. God will use him to teach other men how to love their wife, irrespective of what they've been through, especially those that have even been through abuse. Maybe he's got a ministry there. I don't know where that came from. That just it's not just. And that's you because I've been beg I've been beg I've been begging him. I've been begging now the whole internet is be- is begging him, is, is begging him. But he definitely has something to mm. he definitely has something to impart because he just yeah. it's just his DNA. Like he just mm. he's yeah. a he's a, a born he's a born advocate, I think. Mm. Mm. Oh, thank you, Lord. Well, thank you so much, um, Chema, for your time. Let me see if I can read one or two comments. Much more love and prayers for both of you. So, so happy for you, but says God will use him in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And they've got a lovely, I didn't tell you, they've got a child, you know, three year old. God bless him. Also, man of God, blessing and love. So happy for you and your marriage. You God really sets the solace in families, yes. Absolutely. He does. That was that is literally my testimony. I grew up into the family that I wish I, I had had as a kid. hundred mm. like, percent. Like I didn't know what it was for everyone to support mm. each other, to be there for mm. like, I didn't I didn't get that. And to be fair, mm. when I first walking into that, it was so foreign to me. I was like, This is weird. And I was definitely very guarded. Mm. <laughs> it could tell I didn't trust anybody. Yes. So with time, it, it took time for me to be like, oh, okay, these people are just, um, this is just different. Mm. And then actually made that, made that made me think, oh, you know what? The way I grew up really wasn't normal. Mm. Like healthy. I hadn't seen anything else. Unhealthy. Yeah. Definitely healthy. Yeah. De- definitely exposes unhealthy. Yeah. And it yes. got me on a journey with the Lord of, okay, how do I, he- how do I heal this? Because yeah everyone's not out to get me mm. you know yes so, yes yeah. but seeing it and thank god for his experience you know because yeah. if he's experienced love you can show and give love Absolutely. you cannot give what you do not have so he's mm. giving you what he has grown to see and mm. we pray for more marriages you know so that yeah. we can have children that will go out and show mm. love mm. Oh, that this that is a man of god and purpose for you and your highest good uh love 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 the vibes and support love truly conquers all yes it love does. truly conquers all yes it does thank you for that love matters most excellent there is a need for a voice in this matter there's so many comments here i wanted to read boom season it's sad so many are still in denial of abuse they find it easier to look the other way unless it's directly affects them very very true especially yeah. africans we just we just call our side and as if it's not my it's not my own god yeah. help us it's not thank my, you for it's not my own. Own. yes the more we talk about is the better mm-hmm. yes the more we talk about thank you and did you get help that's the last one i was going to ask you did yes. you get help did you get counseling did you find counseling useful yes I think therapy was really helpful for me to actually help me to open my mouth and say like full because it was bits and bits and bits but I think it gave it, it allowed me to just kind of open my mouth and say exactly what had happened I think that was really important I had said it in bits but not like to- totally mm. um, I think therapy is extremely important I think therapy and pastoral counseling are important but they have two very different functions mm. and I I believe that as a christian that sexual abuse survivors need pastoral counseling and therapy they both do different things both okay. gifts given by god but they do different things so, so they agree with you okay so, so they agree um let's see i just saw one of the comments yeah and i'll talk about that i saw someone else here also he's a counselor i really really would encourage anyone who's been through if you know of anyone that has been through trauma abuse to actually get cancer and I, I i one of them um I, I call her my sister one of the things i think the counselor that she had was a christian 
and it was years ago and that was the person that led her to christ you know yes yes it was that counselor that led her to christ that's so, what we need <laughs> yes and that's why that's why I'm, I'm gonna plug this one in so that's why someone like me i I, and I'm being sure that's why I went into counseling, you know, so and, and NLP coaching and NLP coaching I, it's, it's slightly different from normal coaching and it looks at things like traumas and, you know, heart force and healing and all that. So, um, yes, and especially to Christians. So if you're a Christian and you're a counselor, please reach out to me also. Uh, I'm beginning to put together a database of Christian counselors because we've got to do exploits in this country mm. for people that have gone through. We're going to march forward and we're going to really help um, people to, to heal. So, yes, you can reach out to me on here or on home and if you do know anyone that needs counseling support again please reach out to myself I am I, um, I, I think I saw somebody else that's also a counselor here they haven't sent me but I just want to shout to give a shout out to them because that's the way I am mm -hmm. as well just yes identify 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 oh it's my sister <laughs> it's because she's using her counseling I didn't realize it's her since you need to invite him to your space yes somebody yes. said I should invite your husband <laughs> I, I I would I would tease that I, he has been asked. So I, I have he has been, has been asked. Have been. As a, there's a massive, massive chance that like, he'll be on this sexual abuse series that I'm doing. So yeah. keep the eyes peeled. Yeah. Yes, I will. And you know what? Once he's broken the ice once, if he comes out once, then it usually helps um, for them to come out again. Well, well, you know, let me know if he, if he, if he does come out for one, then I'll invite him here. Yeah. Well, thank you, everyone. Thank you for joining us. And we'll see you next month, end of November for the next one. Like I said, please reach out to us either on Story Before Glory or Honest. Um, Chama, you're not a counsellor, are you? Okay. No, okay. I would love to become a trauma specialist, but I'm not a counselor. Yeah, you should be a trauma specialist. You've got you got so much data. I think I'm even going to come through you for some data. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, everyone. Got to go now. So we kept you a bit. Yeah, we usually finish about nine nine thirty to be honest. So, um, but thank you for all the engagement. You've been absolutely wonderful, and we just want to pray for anyone wherever they may be again that is hurting, going to abuse pray for the love of God, we pray for their ability, mm -hmm. for them to be able to speak out to get to get help. In fact, I actually volunteered, you know, so you know this thing is even big, really gets getting it. I actually volunteered uh, for uh, a, um, what's it called? An abuse center um near my area to actually volunteer to to, to work with them so yes so um yes 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 we, we pray for them that god would you know really really empower them so they can speak up and get help that the holy spirit will stare them and even god will uh, help them encounter those who will help them like i just shared like a counselor a christian counselor help someone i know and she's been a um she's been a uh, uh, a Christian since and she too she's um, playing a part in helping people have a uh, absolutely wonderful week thank you so much again thank, Chama. thank you for being real thank, thank you for being authentic for if you for allowing God to use you thank you for your own tears that is watching other people's gardens and thank you for releasing yourself for God to use I know you're a pastor so next time I will say Pastor Chioma <laughs> You know, and you know it's so beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> it's so beautiful to see how you know when the Bible talks about you know God really you know um, about salvation, God taking us and washing us, you know, using His Word. You know, it's yeah. amazing how you know it doesn't look at our journey of what we've been what we've been through. It redeems us to use us, and our mess becomes a message. Mm. Mm. If you if you take this seriously. Yeah. I carry my Bible on my, my head sometimes. <laughs> you know, when I feel like I'm losing, because sometimes when you're recovering, it takes some time. Sometimes God does some things instantaneously. Mm. There's still areas that he's healing yeah. me on. And for everything else, my Bible on my head. Yeah. We will, yeah. We will sort it out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a journey. It definitely is a journey. It's not a destination. So as you walk your journey, we know that the Holy Spirit walks it with you. Mm. Mm. Okay. Thank you. See everyone. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye. Send you <laughs> lots of love and kisses. Have a blessed week. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.